episode 125. Are these comics going to make good film and television shows? We got Absolute Power Ground Zero. And we have Spirit, the Woman of Tomorrow. And we have Madripoor Knights in their final issue. Let's check them out right now. All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant about movies, comic books, and television shows, as well as the occasional board game. I am your host, Frank Zanka. I am an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as a working filmmaker. And, uh, yeah, uh, working, uh, hopefully working on another uh, show shortly. I will keep you guys all abreast of what's going on. And, uh, yeah, exciting stuff happening in Atlanta. And we have one more strike to go through, and that's why everybody's still on hold. Uh, I have been doing budgets for people and things like that. I think I'm going to run another class, though. Uh, so let me know if you guys are interested in uh, maybe just a one-day, three-hour class, and I'll just kind of go through everything kind of quickly about how to write to a certain budget, how to budget things, how to schedule Things to that effect, things that you would need if you, even if you were doing a short. All right, so let's jump into Absolute Power Ground Zero, which is a uh, the start of this Absolute Power uh, event that Mark Wade is doing. Uh, I do like, I don't like Mark Wade personally. I like his work though, and uh, I do like Dan Mora, but uh, they start out now. Thankfully, Mark Wade is kind of carrying Nicole Maines here. Nicole Maines is not a writer. She is an actor. Okay, she played Dreamer on Supergirl. And they said, oh, yeah, you're an actor in Supergirl. Psh, just come on and write. All you guys that are really writers out there, no, nah, no, nah, you just sit outside. You know, we're going to have the actors write. Come on, man. Come on. Anyway, uh, the Suicide Squad she wrote, which is complete garbage. Um, and here we have the continuation of that Suicide Squad with uh, Dreamer kind of twirling her hair, talking to Waller. And this this little, it's, it's a little vignette of all the things that are happening. I'm just going to collect the main series and I'm just going to go on with the stuff that I am collecting. I'm not going to go out of my way to get any other books out of here. But anyway, so we have uh, Superboy's uh, boyfriend here uh, running, and I guess he phases. But I think we have Deadshot up there. I think it's Deadshot. Uh, targets his foot, so as soon as his foot hits the ground, he pulls the trigger. Now, as anybody knows anything about sniper rifles... Uh, apparently, Mark Wade does not, and neither does Nicole Maines, because they sh you can see the bullet going through his ankle. All right? His foot would be gone. His foot would still be laying there as he'd be running on a stump. There's no way. His foot would have been taken right off. The sniper bullets are like this thick, man. It would have taken his foot completely off. So, uh, I'm already calling bullshit on that. And then he just gets up. He just gets up. And even if they gra even if it grazed him, it would have grazed him and still left a big chunk of his uh, foot, of his ankle out of there. So, but it definitely looks like it actually went through his ankle. So, but he's just walking around. No big deal. And he's like, don't make me fight you. And, you know, she he ends up in prison. And he ends up discovering that she was the one that killed his family because her family was being threatened by Waller. That is, and he even says it, that, uh, you know, he starts basically screaming at her. You're not a hero because you basically killed my family to save your own. That's not what a hero does. And I tend to agree with him there. So this whole beginning thing really paints the Dreamer in a really, really bad situation or a bad light 
where I, I don't give a shit about her character. And I used to watch Supergirl, and I could care less. Uh, if she if she does that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, heroes figure stuff out. They ask for help. Whatever, they'll figure it out. They don't just condemn other people's families. It just doesn't happen. So anyway, then we go into this time travel one where she gets this guy. Uh, I forgot his name already. <laughs> That's how important it was. John Starr. And uh, I guess she wants him to repair a failsafe. She he gives her all the uh, she gives him all the tools to do that, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna bring this psychopathic robot back to life." And instead, he tries to figure out a way to get his time travel thing working, uh, but he needs some objects, so he talks his big burly soldier into taking him into where he could find it uh, under the guise that he's looking for stuff for Waller uh, to finish the stuff for failsafe. Uh, but anyway, he pops through time, and he thinks that he's getting away, but instead he pops into a cell, and he's literally on the other neck the day that he arrived. So she explains that she had some kind of a time travel cage around it, and it would no matter where he'd teleport to, it would be there. And he, she's like, there's nothing you can do, just fix him. And that's what she does. Or, or that's what he does. So now we go on to this next thing where we have, uh, and this is by Joshua Williamson as uh, alone because this is the continuation of Superman. We have this crashing of this thing. So this is the continuation of where the Queen went. Now remember when the Queen was supposed to be Galactus and was supposed to be like nom, 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 eating stuff because she's always hungry? Nope, not anymore. That's just completely gone. So anyway, so she takes the queen and she hooks the queen up uh, and then goes into the queen's mind and this is how the queen thinks of herself as a child and so she ends up spending 20 years inside the mind of the queen and telling her how bad Superman and other, other superheroes are and that she needs to wipe them out. And, of course, that the time is only traveling in her mind and not outside. They were only, she was, like, gone for, like, less than a minute or something to that effect. But anyway, there's, uh, there's Failsafe as well, who's now obviously back in operational. And now the queen thinks of her, uh, as her mother, since te technically she raised her for 20-something years, even though only, like, a minute had passed. And then they just had the... You know, the thing with, I guess, Superman kind of loses his powers or whatever else. It's kind of a uh, just a, a preview of what's going to happen with absolute power. I, I'm, not, I'm not really impressed, unfortunately. Uh, I, I could care less about Nicole Maines and her character. And I can care less about uh, the Queen at this point. If it's going to go into this absolute power thing. I was never really a big failsafe fan. So for me, this was just a waste of time. Uh, I'll see where the rest of the thing goes uh, because I will collect the four issues that have to do with Absolute Power, but other than that, no. Okay, so let's get into... I must have missed something while I was away because uh, I think I missed issue four because uh, this is the Magic Poor Knights thing with uh, Captain America, Wolverine, and and um, Black Widow, and I really like all those characters together. I think it really works, and I really think that together they could make a really good movie if the, if the actors came back, and I guess they would have to pick somebody else for Wolverine because I think that, I think this is it for Jackman. So anyway, they were with assassins, and they were trying to help this other woman get this artifact uh, or whatever he, she was trying to find. And then she was captured, and then all of a sudden, uh, oh, that's right. They had, the these villains touched both Wolverine and Captain America on their skin, and it made them emaciated. He was, like, stealing life force from them, but they were slowly healing back. And then as they were healing back, they got into another fight, and uh, Black Widow was taken. That was the last I saw, so I must be missing something. 
because now they're being possessed. We suddenly went supernatural with this, and they're being possessed. Wow, talk, talk about taking a turn. So, yeah, so now we have, like, an alien supernatural creature there. The possessed Black Widow starts to fight her. And then there's other possessed creature demons things that ended up uh, fighting Captain America. And I'm completely lost by any of this. But that's like the head demon goes into that other woman there. And now we're fighting the woman that's now possessed. And I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm totally lost here. And the fight continues... And it continues, and then we have the, that's when they were going to help find the artifact, but now she has this big mouth thing, and she sucks the guy in, and spits him back out, and then he's got a big mouth. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So we have the whole fight thing going on, we have the mouth fire that ends up hitting Wolverine, and now Wolverine is like half burned off, but he's still possessed. And he's slowly getting his uh, muscle material back over the animantium skeleton. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So they're possessed, but they're still fighting the bad guy. I, I don't know. I don't know. But then Wolverine, I guess, has a little bit of his faculties. And chops away at the woman who's possessed. I'm not sure that the woman who's still whose body that is going to like that. But they end up. You know, fighting these other guys through this kind of this portal. I don't know. And Wolverine says, look, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm not going to destroy everything if you let us go. And that's what happens. They let them all go. And they live happily ever after. I don't know, man. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. They pretty much, there's the artifact. And then they do. They live happily ever after. That's a... The, the woman with the big mouth is the one in the red over there. And then Psylocke and Jubilee are in the back. And Steve is crying. I don't know. And it started out really good. And uh, and it just turned to, to crap. And now we're like, hey, we're going to be heroes and we'll do everything. Uh, Y'all the heroes. Yeah, okay. Uh, last issue was trash. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I liked the first three uh, issues. After that, ugh. I don't know. I missed the set. I missed the fourth one. The fifth one is went off the went off the rails. Man, went off the rails. But those three characters together make a good movie. All right, so let's jump into my Kickstarter here. Uh, this is Spirit, the Woman of Hope. Uh, the artwork is okay in this. Uh, this is issue one. And I like to support indie, indie books. Uh, sometimes they're a disappointment. Uh, sometimes they're just okay. And sometimes they're pretty good, like, like Pumpkin. Uh, I like Pumpkin a lot. And uh, But anyway, this is a general kind of generic superhero, superwoman. And, you know, I, I think that's either a boyfriend. Yeah, she's married because there's the ring. And then she fights this character named Sea level and that's where everything goes to crap. So I guess her family knows and stuff like that. But we had, you know, we have a general superhero, super woman, as if she's Superman. She basically has the same powers. I don't think she has the heat vision, but I think it's everything else. And you know, we have a ger very generic costume for her with the red cape and all that stuff. But anyway, that's her husband, who's a cop. And I guess that. There's a sniper up there I saw too, but anyway, so Sea Level starts causing all sorts of trouble and knocks her out, but she also ends up killing the husband and uh, one of the other uh, bystanders. So she, of course, can't give away her secret identity and say this is my husband. So instead, the uh, the paramedics come in, and meanwhile, everybody's like, oh my god, she allowed, she's no hero, she allowed them to die, oh my god. And of course, she's grieving over her own husband at that point, but she can't really reveal it. So, they're trying to save him, etc., and then she's in the hospital, but he's not looking real good. And his fa her family's like, you need to snap out of it, because, you know, 
sea level is still about, etc. And she's working for someone else, I think, at this point. But anyway, she's all sad, and that's where the family goes, You got to go do something! Go do something! Don't sit here and cry! So that's what they do, and they're having a press conference about, you know, all the collateral damage, etc. Oh, that's right, they had her being checked out. That's what it was. Um, I don't know. But anyway. Uh, anyway, she's back in the thing. She confronts Sea level again. You know, they seeing her as the enemy, so they're shooting at her. And she's like, stop shooting at me! You're gonna hit a ricochet! And anyway, so now she's killing cops continuously, and that's the end of that. They're like, don't stand in my way! I'm gonna find out who's messing with me! Because she's, I guess she's working for somebody. Because I, I have to go, if I have to go through you to get to the woman who set all this up, then I will go through you. And, you know, she has, she's drowning a whole bunch of people. And that's the end of that. Uh, so let's do a recap. Uh, will this make a good film? It's too generic, man. It's just way too generic. It's a, I know we're, we're doing a black woman, you know, and, you know, we can do anything with black women, but it's just, just too generic. Uh, and sea level as a character name. Whatever. Uh, this went off the rails completely. Wolverine, Madripoor Knights, uh, the last issue. It just went off the rails too much here. Uh, so I would say no to that. And then uh, we have uh, Ground Zero. I'm going to see where it co goes. But right now, the first thing to this, I am not impressed. All right. Well, that's it for me. So I got... Three up and three down, man. Three three thumbs down here on three books. Oh, well. <laughs> not that they were all bad. It's just that they are middle of the road and will not make... Will never hit the screen. They'll, they'll never hit the screen. All right. Well, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Remember to give me uh, that thumbs up. Give me those likes. And if you can subscribe, ring that bell, ding, ding, and help me grow the channel out. It's free. Why not? Uh, also, if you're interested in anything else that I've written in the past, uh, the description below has the links to my novels and comics, and you kind of see you can kind of see them right behind me as well. Uh, but I'm on Amazon, and Destiny Aurora is on Audible, and things to that effect. So, yeah, exciting stuff, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Check out some of my other videos as well that'll pop up here, and have a great night. All right, thanks guys. Bye bye.